good morning to one and all present here. Challenges are what makes life interesting and overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. I, Shri Sharai, welcome you all to this hallowed institute. We are extremely honored to have in our midst Reverend Father David Vincent as the chief guest of today's program. You are the former principal of St. Mary's English High School for five successful years. You are one to whom success has occurred due to your continuous and committed love for work. You have shared many important portfolios with rare finesse. Currently, you are the school secretary and apart from that, you are also the director of JDES. We welcome you, Father. I also welcome our school principal, Reverend Father P. Raj, Vice Principals, Sister Rashmi and Reverend Father Alex Darwin, teachers and dear friends. Situations today have changed. No one had ever thought that this pandemic would have such a drastic effect on our lives. No one had ever thought that we would be forced to lock ourselves up in our own homes for the sake of our lives. Now, when we sit and recall, our past flashes in front of us. Our present seems to be hazy and our future seems to be uncertain. But we should not forget that stars cannot shine without darkness. So keeping this message alive within ourselves, the student of Standard 10 presents an English declamation. Before we move ahead, I request our principal, Reverend Father P. Raj, to address the students and motivate them. It is with immense joy that I welcome our students of Standard 10 for this declamation speech. Declamation is an artistic form of speaking. It brings out the actual feelings and the emotions of the original speaker. So one needs to present the full sense of the text being spoken about. Here, the speaker reinterprets the speech, reproducing its original feelings afresh. Today, our students will be re-giving one or other such important speeches of great personalities in history, which must have amused the audience or touched the hearts and minds of the listeners. It must have challenged and changed the mind pattern of the people, inspiring them to work for a common goal and course of action. Teacher Reiki shouldered this responsibility very willingly, putting in all her efforts. I appreciate your initiative, Teacher Reiki. All the best, students. Thank you, Father. Your wise words are an integral part of your personality and they have a significant impact on us. We are grateful for the trust you have reposed in us and it will be our constant endeavor to live up to your expectations. I now entreat our chief guest to kindly enlighten the students with his motivating words and infuse us with his signature style dynamic. My dear students, Oliver Wendell speaks about language where he says language is the blood of the soul into which thoughts run and out of which they grow. Yes, it is true. As you participate in this English declamation, we need to know that every declamation has to bring forth lot of informations. Informations 
with expressions and direction and when you speak you need to know that every word is important and when the words come out it is not yours alone there are many people who make use of these words and it becomes everyone else's so as you participate in this english declamation you need to know that every language is a vital tool for communication be careful that you are communicating not with yourself alone but with the whole people filled with lot of countrymen who know plenty of things as they get information from everywhere you need to know that you are sharing your thoughts and ideas with a lot of expressions as you participate in this english declamation you need to remember the famous speech by mark antony where he addresses his countrymen with a lot of emotions emotions make the speech better but emotions alone is not a speech it has to fill with a lot of actions and it has to bring out a lot of creativity so as teacher sarabjit reki has arranged for this english declamation i congratulate her and each one of you for having come forward to participate in the english declamation i wish you all the best may god bless you and may god be with you always and i also thank your parents and others who have encouraged you to participate in this wishing all the best praying for you and your family as you undergo lot of tense during this covid 19 may god protect our country our people and our nation and this english declamation which may bring unity to all men and women thank you may god bless you we thank you for all your words of wisdom that radiated a source of energy within us thank you father with this we now initiate with the day's program i now call upon our first participant with nal kishore of standard 10c good morning everyone the great dictator by charlie chaplin was very popular with audiences all across the world in his speech he condemned the dictators of germany and the horrors of the nazi concentration camps at that time the airplane and the radio have brought us closer to one another the very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men cries out for universal brotherhood for the unity of us all even now my voice is reaching millions millions of despairing men women and little children victims of a system that make men torture and imprison innocent people for those who can hear me i say the misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress the hate of men will pass and dictators die and the power they took from the people will return to the people and so long as men die liberty will never perish soldiers don't give yourselves to these brutes men who despise you who enslave you who regiment your lives tell you what to do what to think what to feel who drill you diet you treat you like cattle use you as cannon fodder don't give yourselves to these unnatural men machine men with machine minds and machine hearts you are not machines you are not cattle you have the love of humanity in your heart you don't hate only the unloved hate the unloved and the unnatural soldiers don't fight for slavery fight for liberty in the 17th chapter of st luke it is written the kingdom of god is within man not in one man nor a group of men but in all men in you 
You the people have the power. The power to create machines. The power to create happiness. You, you the people have the power to make this life a wonderful adventure. To make this life a beautiful place. Then in the name of democracy, let us all unite. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie. They do not fulfill what they promise. They never will. So let us fight to fulfill that promise. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Let us fight for a world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. A world with reason. Let us fight to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite. Thank you. Thank you, Gunal, for such an energetic and powerful speech. Calling up next is Saikat Sen Gupta of Standard 10A. Good morning, everyone. The symbol of strength, holiness, and purity. Swami Vivekananda in the World Parliament of Religions on 11 September 1893 gave the world the real definition of charity, religion and humanity. One of the greatest speech ever given. Sisters and brothers of America, it fills my heart with joy, unspeakable to rise in response to the warm and cordial welcome that you have given us. I thank you in the name of the most ancient order of monks in the world and I thank you in the name of the mother of religion. I am proud to belong to a religion which has taught the world both tolerance and universal acceptance. I am proud to belong to a nation which has sheltered the persecuted and the refugees of all religions and all nations of the earth. Let me quote you a few lines from the hymn which I remember to have repeated from my earliest boyhood and which is every day repeated by millions of human beings. As the different streams, having their sources in different paths, which men take through different tendencies, various though they appear, crooked or straight, all lead to thee. I am not going just now to venture my own theory, but if any individual here hopes that this unity will come, by the survival of any one of the religion and the destruction of the other, to him I say, Brother, yours is an impossible hope. Do I wish that the Christian would become a Hindu? God forbid. No. Do I wish that the Hindu or Buddhist would become a Christian? God forbid. No. The seed is put in the ground and the earth, the air and the water surrounds it. Does the seed become the air, the earth or the water? No. It becomes a plant. It assimilates the air, the earth and the water and grows into a plant. Similar is the case with religion. The Christian is not to become a Hindu, nor a Hindu or a Buddhist to become a Christian. 
if the world parliament of religions has taught anything to the world it is this it has proved to the world that holiness purity and charity are not the exclusive possessions of any church in the world and that every system has produced men and women of the most exalted character in the face of this evidence if anybody here still hopes for the exclusive survival of his own religion and the destruction of the other i pity him from the bottom of my heart and point out to him brother upon the banner of every religion they will soon be written help and not fight assimilation and not destruction peace harmony and not dissension thank you so much thank you saiga for this wonderful speech of the wandering philosopher Moving further, we now have our next participant, Raka De of Standard Ten G. Good morning, everyone. This speech was given by former First Lady Michelle Obama at a Let Girls Learn event celebrating International Women's Day. Hi everyone. It is a pleasure to be here with all of you on this International Women's Day as we mark the first anniversary of Let Girls Learn. 62 million girls worldwide. Girls who are just as smart and hard working as we are aren't getting the opportunities that we sometimes take for granted for me it was the drum beat of horrifying stories malala yousafzai shot in the head by terrorists just for speaking the simple truth that girls should go to school more than 200 nigerian girls kidnapped from their school dormitory by a terrorist group determined to keep them from getting an education little girls being brutally assaulted on their way to school girls in every corner of the globe facing grave danger simply because they were full and equal human beings worthy of developing their boundless potential i realized that the barriers to girls education isn't just resources it's not just about access to transportation or scholarships or school bathrooms it is also about attitudes and beliefs the belief that girls simply aren't worthy of an education that women should have no role outside their home that their bodies aren't their own the minds don't really matter and their voices simply shouldn't be heard like most women i know what it feels like to be overlooked to be underestimated to have someone only half listen to your ideas at a meeting or to experience those whistles and taunts as you walk down the street these issues play out not just on a personal level but on a national level in our laws and policies and today it is so easy to take for granted all the progress we've made on these kinds of issues but the fact is that right now today so many of these rights are under threat from all sides always at risk of being rolled back if we let our guard down for a single minute these rights were secured through long hard battles waged by women and men and make no mistake about it education 
was central to every last one of those efforts. Girls around the world understand this. These girls risk everything to go to school each day. And I am passionate about this because I truly see myself in these girls, in their hunger, in their burning determination to rise above their circumstances and reach for something more. Every single one of us has a role to play on this issue. It will not be easy and it will not be quick. But make no mistake about it. We can do this. I know we are all up to the task. I know we are. And I cannot wait to see all the doors we will open, all the fortunes and futures we transform for girls across the globe. Thank you all so much. God bless. Thank you, Raka, for such an inspirational speech. Here we have our next participant, Adnan Shamim of Standard 10B. Good morning everyone, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was an American civil rights activist who became the most visible spokesperson and leader during the civil rights movement from 1955 to 1968. He delivered a speech at the Lincoln Memorial during the march on Washington on August 28, 1963, which he called an end to racism in the United States. I am happy to join you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree is a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who have been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But hundred years later, the Negro is still not free. One hundred years later, the life of the Negro is still badly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. One hundred years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. This sweltering summer of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. We cannot be satisfied as long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote and the Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. I say to you today, my friends, even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places plains and the crooked places shall be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. This is the faith I go to the south with. With this faith, we will be able to transform the tangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, 
we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to stand up for freedom together, to go to jail together, knowing that we will be free one day. When we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every state and every city, then we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Thank you. Thank you Adnan for this fantastic speech. The next participant we have is Soumya Sharma of Standard 10. Good morning everyone. We all are imperfectly perfect with such powerful words. I would like to introduce Muniba Mazari Baloch, the Iron Lady of Pakistan. At the age of 21, she was left half paralyzed from the hip down after surviving a tragic car accident. This speech was given by her at the English Speeches platform on 7th of July 2018. Whoa! I'm running short of words right now, but I cannot afford this because I have to speak. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for accepting me. Well, I always start my talk with a disclaimer. And that disclaimer is that I've never claimed myself to be a motivational speaker. Yes, I do speak, but I feel more like a storyteller because wherever I go, I share a story. There was this terrorist attack in the army public school Peshawar where these terrorists entered in an examination hall and they killed our children. In that attack, this beautiful boy, Walid Khan, who was my hero, my real life hero. Those barbarians shot him three times on his face, five times on his body, and he fell down. I was asked that he is in a hospital and you have to go to see him, motivate him and tell him that it's going to be okay. And when I saw Walid Khan coming on a wheelchair for the first time, his face was all deformed. I kept thinking, what should I say? While I was juggling with words of what and what not to say, this beautiful boy, Walid Khan, came to me and said, Are you Muniba Mazari? I said, Yes. He said, Let's take a selfie. And with that beautiful toothless smile of Walid Khan, we took that beautiful selfie that I still have with me. He is happy with himself. And when somebody asks him, what happened to your face? You know what he says? 
These cars are my medals and I wear them with pride. If you think that your life is hard and you're giving up on that because you think your life is unfair, think again. Real happiness doesn't lie in success, money or fame. Real happiness lies in gratitude. There are some incidents that happen in your life and those incidents are so strong that they break you. They deform your body but they transform your soul. Those incidents break you deform you, but they mold you into the best version of you. I believe in power of words. The words can make you, break you, they can heal your soul, they can damage you forever. So I always try to use the positive words in my life wherever I go. They call it adversity. I call it opportunity. They call it weakness. I call it strength. They call me disabled. I call myself differently abled. So while I end my talk on a very short note, live your life fully. Accept yourself the way you are. Be kind to yourself. I will repeat. Be kind to yourself and only then you can be kind to others. Thank you so much everyone. Thank you. Thank you Soumya. It was indeed a motivational speech. We now have our last participant, Shivam Sridhar of Standard 10B. Good morning everyone. President Kennedy infused his speech with a clear sense of optimism and urgency while also acknowledging the risk and cost of the Apollo program. On September 12, 1962, he gave this speech in Rice Stadium, Houston. I am delighted to be here and I'm specifically delighted to be here on this occasion. We meet in a city noted for progress and knowledge, in a state noted for strength, and we stand in need of all three, for we meet in an hour of change and challenge. Despite the ever-growing scientific community, the vast stretches of the unknown and the unanswered and the unfinished still far outstrip our collective comprehension. Surely, the opening the stars of space promises high costs and hardship, as well as high rewards. So it is not surprising that some of us would ever stay where we are a little longer to rest, to wait. But this city of Houston, this state of Texas, and this country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. This country was conquered by those who moved forward and so will we. If this teaches us anything, it is that man in his quest for knowledge and progress is determined and cannot be deterred. The exploration of space will go ahead no matter we join it or not and it is by far one of the greatest adventures of all times. Our country, which has stopped in every field, cannot be in the backwash of the coming age of space. We mean to be a part of it and we mean to lead it. Yet, the vows of this nation can only be fulfilled if we in this nation are first and therefore we intend to be first. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon 
in this decade itself not because it is easy but because it's hard because this goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is a one which we are willing to accept and one which we intend to win to be sure we are behind and will be behind for some time in man missions but we do not intend to stay behind and in this decade itself we shall make up and move ahead i realize that space effort itself is in some measure an act of pure faith and vision for we do not know now what benefits await us but if i were to say my fellow citizens we shall send to the moon to an untried mission to an unknown celestial body and then return it safely to earth well space is there and we are going to climb it and the moon and the planets are there and new hopes for knowledge and peace are there and therefore as we set sail we ask god's blessing on the most hazardous dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked thank you thank you shiva for such an encouraging speech my co-partner trina paul will now do the comparing good morning everyone it all started with an initiative taken by teacher sarabjit rekhi who devoted long hours a day in preparing the students thank you ma'am for being the catalyst and it was through your constant guidance that we could make this possible despite the lockdown so here we have a message from teacher rekhi sometimes life changes overnight one day the streets were hustling and bustling with myriad activities the next day we woke up to find deserted streets skeletally staffed offices and indefinite school closed down such novel situations bring about novel changes that we need to learn to adapt to and overcome sounds easy but it doesn't work out easily opportunities to find deeper paths within ourselves come when life seems most challenging in unprecedented situations like this there are opportunities for students to shine here we have made an effort to turn our limitations into possibilities i applaud the work of these students who right from coping with internet connectivity to notorious power supply did not let these issues overpower their zeal and vigor our students have demonstrated incredible resilience and determination to keep on learning and thriving despite the constraints and hurdles i congratulate them all i'm sure we will overcome this ordeal with our hopes intact and rededicated to the mission that unites us audience keep your positivity and spirits high thank you ma'am you were indeed inspiring with this we come to an end of the day's program but before memories fade away emotions take over 
and disparities prevail because of the pandemic, I would like to quote, Don't let the shadows of yesterday spoil the sunshine of tomorrow. Even when you see the shadows leading your way, just turn towards the sun and the shadows will be behind you. While thanking the Almighty for His countless blessings and never-ending grace, I would like to spell out words of thanks to everyone present here. I thank our chief guest, Father David Vincent, for his prayers, good wishes and concern for the school. I thank our principal, Father P. Raj, for his unflinching support and guidance. I also thank our vice principals, Sister Rashmi, and Father Alex Darwin for their constant encouragement and motivation. A special thanks to our teacher Sarabjit Rekhi for being our mentor and guiding force behind the program. Our deep appreciation goes to the participants for showcasing their excitement and remarkable dedication despite the hurdles. We also owe a special thanks to Rudra Pratap Sinha, a student of Standard 10B, who has worked behind the scenes and helped us in completing the video. Thank you.